What's up, guys? I hope everybody's doing really, really well. I am uh, really excited to do Bible study tonight. I hope that you guys have had an absolutely incredible day. My day has been absurdly busy, to say the very least. I apologize that we are starting so late. It is definitely uncharacteristic of me to be this far behind. But you know what? When God answers prayers, he tends to do it in some pretty incredible ways. Um, I'm glad everybody is hopping on. For everybody who is new here, we do this every single week, um, every single Monday at uh, 7 p.m. Super excited everybody's here. Uh, tonight, I am going to, man, tonight my heart is just in some serious, serious, serious um, wanting to fight against the spirit of depression. Like that is where my heart is right now. So tonight we're going to be doing something a lot different. We're going to be talking about um, we're going to be talking about depression. We're going to be talking about some promises that God gives us. We're going to be talking about um, the book of Proverbs uh, and uh, chapter twelve specifically in the book of Proverbs. We're going to be dealing with a lot, a lot of different stuff today. And like I said, I'm sorry I'm running a little late today. Business has been absolutely incredible. Um, like I said, it's kind of one of those things whenever we pray uh, that we really need God for something, man, lots of times he would just show up and show out in ways you just didn't even think that he knew how to. Uh, or not, you know, in ways that we would think that he would at least. If that's probably a better word. He knows everything. So anyways, I'm super excited you guys are here. For you guys that are just joining us, we usually start at 7. I'm about five minutes late. We've had an incredible day in business. Um, and I hope that everybody else has had an incredible day to, uh, as well. So I started praying a couple of, I don't know, it was uh, several, several, several days ago about what to talk about tonight. And just one word, one word came to my mind. It was depression. And I think that the way that this Bible study is going to go is we're going to, we always open up in prayer, but we're going to really learn how to pray. I think that, I think that a lot of us, maybe struggle with, with praying. A lot of us may have just a general understanding of, you know, conversation with God, but there's a big difference in between general conversation, you know, with God on your way to work and sitting and spending time with the Lord in prayer and just giving that one-on-one. -on -one. So tonight we're going to try to go into that. Um, tonight, I hope you guys are prepared to pray. Because uh, if you're not, you better get ready because that's what's going to happen. We're going to pray quite a bit tonight, um, and we're also going to go into Proverbs. So uh, we're going to wait just a couple more minutes. Usually we have about 30 once again. My bad about starting a little bit later than expected. Um, but like I said, at the same time, man, uh, today's day in business is something that I've been praying for. Um, it is definitely something that I've been praying for. So we are. Uh, if you guys actually help pray with me, that would be incredible. We are about, I don't know, somewhere a little north of 60,000 away from our my year in sales goal. And I'm so excited we are this close. And the Lord just showed up and showed out today. Because earlier today we were like, I don't know, 80-something thousand away. So it's been great. God's blessed us today. So anyways, so... What we're going to do is, uh, if you don't have your pen and paper out, go ahead and get your pen and paper out. Tonight, we're going to start out with prayer. Um, if you wouldn't mind putting a thumbs up in the comments, if you can hear me, if you guys can uh, you know, hear me well, that'd be incredible. That way, you can let me know. Um, but yeah, so tonight's going to be really different. We're going to learn how to pray tonight or kind of go into that prayer. Um, so guys, if you have any prayer requests whatsoever, don't forget, put them in the comments and we have a whole group of people here that'd be more than happy to pray for you, including me. Um, I can't solve all the problems in the world, guys. I, I can get a million personal messages a day. And it, it, the reality of it is we have got a praying group here and, uh, your needs will get prayed for by me, somebody else, somebody's going to pray for them because the reality of it is, is it, we need to have the mindset is, is that if I'm not doing it, ain't nobody's doing it. If I'm not reading my word, and nobody's reading my word. If I'm not reaching out to somebody, nobody's reaching out to somebody. If I'm not praying for somebody, then nobody's praying for that person. We need to, we need to individually take a personal responsibility for the people that are around us and keep them in our prayers. Um, so yeah, so I was praying a couple days ago and the word depression just popped up. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. This is very, very different for me. The Lord literally changed up 
90% of what I kind of had an idea within like the last 30 minutes, which is not uncharacteristic of God. If anybody's ever taught before, you know God can, depending on who's who's making the choice to tune in and watch, can pull a zinger on you. And um, anyways, anyway, so let's go ahead and pray. If you got any prayer requests, make sure to put them in the um, comments below and we will definitely pray for you. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead and let's just go right into it. So Lord, and you guys, you guys need to pray with me. You guys need to pray with me because we really, really, really want to dig into a deeper level of prayer. Lord, I thank you, God, for this Bible study group. Jesus, Jesus, Lord, I pray you would guide us. I pray you'd strengthen us, God. Lord, I pray that there be an impartation of authority, God. Jesus, Lord, I pray you'd impart authority, God, and boldness, God, into each and every one of us, Lord. I pray that every shy and nervous and fearful spirit is 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 gone in Jesus name Lord I pray we begin to preach uh, we'd be able to uh, Jesus we'd be able to speak bold prayers and to teach bold lessons God in Jesus name I rebuke combined depression I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of our minds God in Jesus name I rebuke about anything coming against us God I pray you would give us clarity I pray you give us wisdom I pray you give us knowledge God Lord, I rebuke and bind anything that's coming against us, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that hearing this word, we get revelation, wisdom, knowledge, clarity, understanding, God. Lord, I pray that afterwards, God, we'd share it with as many people as we can because we never know, we never know when that message can really help somebody else. And God, I rebuke and bind fear, I rebuke and bind depression, I rebuke and bind anxiety, God, in Jesus' name. And I lose your peace, your love, and your joy, God, to flow. And I thank you, God, for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for this incredible Bible study group we've got. I thank you for every single new person that's come on here. I thank you for every single person that's been here from day one. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mm. All right. Man, God is so good, guys. God is so good. He is so good. All right. Let's go right into it. Um, If you have your Bibles, uh, I want you to flip to... Uh, Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 12. All right, Proverbs chapter 12. There we are. Okay, so tonight I want to go into just some basic wisdom and some basic knowledge. Um, We're just going to go line by line through Proverbs chapter 12. So, some somebody even before I started my Christian my, my, my Christian walk, somebody advised me, even just for some general knowledge, that we should read a proverb a day. Proverbs is all about wisdom. It's all about knowledge. It's all about understanding. It's all about guiding us in the right direction. And, and it doesn't matter if it's, it's spiritual. It could be for business. It could be your personal life. Whatever the case may be. Um, Proverbs is just an incredible book. So I challenge you guys, read a proverb a day because it'll change your life. So this lesson right here is is, is for those who have never really gone into depth of, of Proverbs. And we're going to start off in Proverbs 12 today. Um, so, oh man, first one coming right out of the gate. Um, yeah. So this is the actual translation, just as an FYI. I don't, I don't, this is not me talking. This is just straight out of Proverbs. A New King James Version. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. That's literally what it says. Whoever loves instruction uh, loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. And I think that the point that they're trying to make here is if is if correction isn't made, what we do is we keep on making the same mistakes over and over and over again and 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 stepping into the same potholes over and over and over again and like you kind of got to think to yourself like why would we want to continue to step in the same mess over and over again and the reality of it is we don't we don't want to continue to make the same mistakes over and over again but a lot of people can read self-help books and those are great and they can seek out wisdom and that's great and they can seek advice and that's great but but all the advice all the self-help books everything that those things have to provide is absolutely useless unless we're willing to we're willing to make a change, we're willing to take action. So that's the whole see the difference in between somebody who has a walk with God and somebody who doesn't have a walk with God is just that one word, walk. Right? Walking is somebody who's actively trying to go deeper 
uh, in their relationship. Walking is 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 telling people about God on a daily basis. Walking is 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 praying. God, give me opportunities, man. Like if you're not going to use use me. Use me for the opportunities that you want to reach out to somebody. That's a prayer of somebody who wants to walk with God. But see, there's there's also the other side, uh, side of that coin. Whereas if we pray for opportunities, we have to be willing and gutsy enough and faithful enough to step out on those opportunities. Because see, God is not going to continue to give us opportunities if we don't step out and take them. Right? And I've gotten, I have gotten in this habit or back in the day, I got in this habit of God, please give me an opportunity. And then boom, there it was, you know what I'm saying? It was shiny. You know, the, the Lord gave me somebody to pray for. He, you know, or whatever. And then I got nervous, but then I, I what I did was I comforted myself. It's like, okay, I'm learning your voice, God. And God's this whole time. He's like, man, this is my voice. Go do it. Right? So my point in saying this is that if, if somebody comes at us and, and says, Hey, you know, you probably need to stop hanging around those people or, Hey, um, you know, uh, maybe your prayers need to shift in this way or whatever, or, or just you're reading the word and you're getting offended. It literally says, he who hate correction, he who hates correction is stupid. And, and the Bible is a double-edged sword, right? It's, it's, it's meant to cut us to get, it's meant to cut the things off, right? That don't belong. And it's also meant to draw us at the same time closer to God. And there's one word, there's one word that came to me whenever I read the scripture, and that is stubbornness. Stubbornness will kill a walk. Stubbornness will kill a walk. And, you, and once, you, once you realize that, you kind of got to ask yourself, why wouldn't I want to be cre- Why wouldn't I want to be corrected? And the one answer is flesh. Um, one thing that was said over the weekend that really got me, we need to make sure that we are not necessarily being guided too much by our feelings um, rather than we need to be guided by uh, guided by the advancement or our walk, the, the desire to get closer in our walk. Lots of times what we can do is we can make excuses for breaking fast. We can make excuses for continuing to smoke. We can make excuses for continuing to go to parties. We can make ex- excuses for continuing to, to drink or whatever the case may be. But the reality of it is, is that the Bible tells us what to do and it tells us what not to do. And it's our feelings that are so intertwined in our lives sometimes that 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 really can mess that up. So my point is, is if you're trying to get rid of something like an addiction or you're trying to get rid of something or, or, or whatever, set up boundaries, set up boundaries. And we, anyways, I'm getting way off. I'm squirreling. All right. Um, another thing is that uh, the word depression came to me when I was when I was getting ready for this word. And I just, I have in my heart that, that there are people right now that are worried about family members. There are people that are worried about their friends. There are people that are worried about job situations. There are people worried about who's going to be elected president. There are people who are worried about COVID. And let me just read a scripture that should subside all of those, okay? Matthew 6, verse 31 through 33. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Where should we be clothed? For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need of all of these things. And then verse 33 is the kicker right here. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. If you want something in this life, <laughs> we're going to have to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then these things are going to add it, be added unto you. See, I think a lot of people, what we'll do is we will we'll start out at seek ye first the kingdom, and then everything else is going to be added unto us. But the reality of it is, is we can seek the kingdom unrighteously. What my point is, is, is there's, it's a three-step thing here. It's like a math problem, right? If you want something in your walk with God, if you want something in life, number one, you seek ye first the kingdom of God. Is it the will of God for me to have this or not? Second thing and his righteousness. Am I doing absolutely everything in, I, in my ability, in my power to walk with him? Am I right with God? Okay. And then it says, and all these things shall be added unto you. Um, next scripture I want to read, just going to go down the line here. A man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions, he will condemn. Um, a man that is established by wickedness, but the root of righteousness cannot be moved. And this next one right here, this one drives me nuts. This one right here can be taken out of context so much. Um, you know, 
I'm going to read this for what it is. It says, But an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes shame is like rottenness to his bones. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a, a sidestep right here, and I'm going to read a scripture, and this is really for couples. This is really for families. This is really for husbands and wives because I think that we need to understand that, that even though that God has an, an, an order in which he does things, I think that that can be taken advantage. I think, I think a lot of men out there can take advantage of, of ooh, Jesus. I'm just going to read it, and then I'm going to, okay. It says, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. You know, the Bible says take every single thought to, in, into captivity, every single thought into captivity. What that means is that 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 the Satan's going to throw fear at you. He's going to throw depression at you. He's going to throw anxiety at you. And it is up to us to immediately capture that thought and throw it out. See, the last thing we need to do is whenever we get attacked is to take there and basically take it and run with it. Because all Satan has to do is implant a thought in our minds. And, and if we are undisciplined in our walk with God, what happens is I've been there, guys. That's the only reason why I'm talking about this. I've been there where Satan throws the thought in my mind, and then for the rest of the day, I dwell on it, and I take it on. And and see, Satan has done his work. He did his work in the morning whenever you got frustrated, but you have done your part in it by just a, just taking that frustration to the rest of your day. See, a lot of people say, oh, I've had a bad day today, or I've had a rough morning this morning. And by the way, guys, I've been guilty. I've absolutely been guilty of it. But anyways, all right. You, you, you want to get out of depression. You want to get out of anxiety. You're going to surround yourself with people who, who feel the positive in you and not the negative in you. And, and you're going to seek God above all things for your encouragement. Because if you seek man for your encouragement, man's going to fail you, man. Man will fail you one time or another. That's why it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Not speaking to, oh Jesus, and singing melody to the Lord in your heart. To the Lord. Oh, man, here we go. Giving thanks for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of God. Here's the part I really wanted to get to. This is the relational part right here. And this is where I think a lot of us mess up. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For husbands, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. And a lot of people stop there and it burns me up and it drives me up the wall. Because verse 25, you know what verse 25 says? Husband, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Hmm. Love is a mutual thing. Love is an absolute mutual thing in a walk with God. It is an absolute mutual thing in a walk with God. The Lord, the Lord, oh, Jesus. I've said enough there. I'm hearing a bunch of amens in my Dave Gum spirit right now, so I've said enough on that particular topic. <clears throat> Anyways, you get my point. We need to make sure that we're not, oh, Jesus. We need to make sure we're not abusing and twisting the word for what it is not meant to be at. And yes, absolutely, does, the, does God have an order of things? Yes, he does. He absolutely does. But at the same time, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. In order to have a good relationship, there's going to have to be communication. There's going to have to be communication. There's going to have to be understanding on both sides. Oh, Jesus. Most relationships fall because of a lack of communication. Most relationships with God fall because of a lack of communication. All right. Anyways. Verse 5. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. Um, the words of the wicked are lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. This is... This reminds me of a work situation one, one time, in a nutshell, that someone um, was about to get in a little bit of trouble, 
and it wasn't um, it wasn't true. It wasn't warranted, and nobody said anything. The right thing to do. Mm, all right, I need to move on. Okay, all right. So, um, anyways, uh, next verse. Uh, the wicked are overthrown and no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. I love this, guys. I absolutely love this. It says, but the house of the righteous will stand. If you're in right standing with God, yeah, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Um, the Lord gave me this word a little bit earlier when I was praying for this particular scripture right here. When it says, but the house of the righteous will stand. This word is for somebody, uh, uh, someone in here. Um, it says, uh, it, and this Lord spoke me, spoke through me this, uh, spoke through me earlier and said this. He says, say it to the Lord. Those people who are bothering you right now will be no more. So somebody here is dealing with some family problems or some friend issues or whatever the case may be. And the Lord really put this on my heart. It says, I think that what the Lord is saying is just to hold on and keep seeking him. And he's going to continue to move the pieces of the puzzle around right now, whether you see it or not. And you're discouraged because you don't see the puzzle pieces moving around. And what he said, he says, pray more, seek more, praise more, worship more. He's going to show up, but he's only going to show up if we're in right standing. The promises of God, although these promises we're talking about, the promises of God are only good, are only good for those who actually hold on to the word. Now let's kind of go into, because there's a difference in between praise, prayer, and worship, okay? Kind of go into that topic we were talking about earlier. Prayer is that everyday conversation, right? Prayer is that everyday conversation we should be talking to God throughout the day, and this is what he's going to do. Um, you know, uh, this this is God, you know, I pray that you'd heal uh, my, my mom, or God, Lord, I pray that you would provide my best friend with that job that he needs. Um, you know, prayer is, is for what he's going to do. Praise is for what he's already done. Now, praise, you can you can kind of uh, couple praise with, you know, the jumping and the shouting and the excitement, you know, that part of, uh, of, of our walk. And then worship is for what he's doing right now. God, thank you for, 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 for like today, for example, guys, like I have just, this is just a little testimony, man. I just, I've been getting fought so much over the last two weeks. It has been unreal. I mean, just insane how much I've been getting fought. And um, I, I've done my best to just hold on. And it says worship for what is doing, what he's doing right now. Guys, I'm so thankful. Like our, 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 I'm so, we're so much closer today to our sales goal than we were yesterday or the day before or whatever. If, if, if we stand in right staying with God, he's going to show up in your situation. He's going to help you out. Um, let's keep going. Let's just go in. Um, Skip down to verse 12. The wicked covet the catch of evil men, but the root of righteousness yields fruit. Don't get jealous whenever somebody else is getting blessed and maybe they're not living for God. Don't, don't get jealous if somebody else, maybe even they're living for God and they got what you want. See, here's the thing. Here's how God works. God works on testing your reaction to situations. For, for example, lots of times what happens is that... that the Lord will, you'll pray, you'll ask for a spiritual gift, you'll ask for something to happen, and it doesn't happen in your life, but it happens to somebody that you know, or it happens to somebody that you're close to. And what, what's going on there is before he releases the blessing to you, he's testing your reaction to see what you're going to do when your brother gets blessed or your sister gets blessed. Mm, our reaction is everything when it comes to trials, right? Like Job, for example. Job, man, lost everything. Lost his family. Lost his lost and family. Enough is is bad. Lost his family. Lost his income. Lost just a whole slew of things. And you know what? He could have been bitter. He had every right to be agitated, ticked off, super upset. But you know what he did? He held on and he worshipped through it. Even his own wife said, "Curse God and die." But you know what he did instead? He worshiped through it. And God blessed him twice as much as what he had before. Our response to trials matters so much. Man. Another one. Uh, verse 13. The wicked uh, is ensnared by the transgression of his lips. Oh, God, ain't that the truth. But the righteous will come through trouble. Um, verse 15. 
oh man, this is this one right here. This one right here has held me over so much, guys. Verse 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. I've said this a million times, and you know I've said this a million times. Who we hang around with, who we choose to surround ourselves with matter. I posted a post a few days ago. It was who you're hanging around with right now and choosing to surround yourself with is a direct reflection of what your life is going to look like in five years. My point, if you're already five years down the road, hanging around the same people, dealing with the same issues, dealing with the same drug problem, dealing with the same drinking problems, dealing with the same this, the same that, you need to change your friends, you need to change the scenery, and, and you need some good spiritual folks in your life that are willing to head you in the right direction. Because if you continue, ooh, Jesus, Nobody moves anywhere. I got this. I got this. This is a quote I heard from the other day. Robin Johnson, actually. Nobody helps anybody out. Oh, gee, how do I say this the right way? You're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere trying to succeed if you are asking advice from somebody else who's in the same ditch. You're going to remain in the ditch if you're asking folks for advice that are still in the ditch. They're still in the ditch for a reason. That means they're not willing to change. We got we got to be willing to change. Who we hang around with matters so much. Um, man, all right. Verse nineteen: The truthful lip shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is for a moment. This is very interesting because a lot of people they won't recognize that somebody tells the truth all the time, but they will recognize when they hear somebody lying. Having a lie, you know, it's like gossip. Everybody, no, no, nobody, nobody. How would I say this? No, nobody, nobody recognizes somebody as, oh yeah, man, this guy tells the truth all the time, right? Nobody does. So, so people will classify somebody as the gossiper. People will classify somebody as the liar. You know what people also can classify people as? This guy worships, man, in church. This guy, this guy is used mightily by God. I want to go after this guy. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so what comes out of our mouth is a direct, and what comes out of our mouth and what comes out of our, our actions is a direct classification of how other people view us. Right? And it's hard to get rid of a stain. It's hard to get, can it be done? Yes. Yes, it can be done. If you, if you, if you were known for hurting people left and right, and you were really trying to do better, some people may not forgive you. That's their problem. If you are making a change right now in your life, you've asked them for forgiveness, you've done everything in your ability and your power to show them that you're a changed person and you genuinely are, if they're unwilling to forgive, that's their own issue because the reality of it is is we're supposed to forgive. He says that, that unless we forgive somebody else, God's not going to forgive us. Forgiveness is not an option. And yes, it's hard to get rid of a stain sometimes. It really is. Sometimes it takes time. But you pray that the Lord helps them. You pray that the Lord helps you. I want to be classified as a worshiper. I want to be classified as somebody who walks with God. I want to be classified as somebody who 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 steps out on faith and prays for that dude in Walmart. Not because it brings any glory to myself, because guess what? In the end of the day, I got one guy to answer to. One guy. His name is Jesus. That's it. We all need to have the attitude of, I got one person to impress today. I got one person to give my all today to, and that's Jesus. Oh, all right. Uh, verse 20. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil. Well, that's kind of an obvious one. But the counselors of peace have joy. Uh, I'm going to keep going. Verse 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. You'll notice that too, by the way, is that lots of times the more that people... The Lord is stopping me here. The hand of a diligent... Uh, the hand of a uh, the hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put into forced labor. This isn't. Mm, he's stopping me again. Okay. Mm. All right. Verse twenty five. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. 
we need to make sure that we are surrounding ourselves with people who encourage us to do the right things. And we don't need to be glad when somebody else falls, even if it's somebody we don't like. The ultimate act of humility is to pray for somebody that doesn't like you. Pray for somebody who's actively trying to cause harm to you. That's the ultimate act of humility. Um, <laughs> anyways, so guys, I know this this is a lot different than what our normally uh, our normal Bible studies are. Um, right now, I just I genuinely just want to go into prayer, like. I started praying a couple of days ago, well, not a couple of days ago, but a little while ago, a few days back, about what to deal with in this Bible study. And like I said, the Lord has changed up absolutely everything in the last 20 to 30 minutes. Like, He really did, really changed up everything. But there's a deliverance for somebody that's on this Bible study right now. Whether you're watching it right now, who you couple your so talk about, Jesus. Whether you're watching this right now, or you're watching it 10 years down the road, there's a deliverance power that is, is, is whew, that needs to be, ooh, Jesus, that God wants to release right now. And it specifically, specifically has to do with, um, has to do with uh, uh, anxiety and depression. I don't know who you are, but I had a vision of, somebody earlier, um, a, a female and, and she was sitting on her bed and her face was, her hands were just in the palm of her face. And it's coming, it's, it's like coming back to me. It's like, it, there, there, there are words that were popping over this person. And one was, one was money, like finances and stuff like that. And I, I'm sure that there were, I'm sure that there are others, but my point is, is that Going back to the original aspect, the original uh, beginning of the Bible, Bible study, God knows what you need. God knows what you need. We have to open our mouth and we have to ask him for it. But not only do we have to ask him for it, remember it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That means asking, God, this is what I, this is what I want. This is what I need, God. And then, and his righteousness. The only way you're going to get deliverance is if you live right and you talk to God and you ask God for it says, we, we have not because we ask not, right? God wants to bless us. See, we're kings and queens. We are, we're kings and queens. We, we, are, we are a child. We are children of the king. We have the same power living inside of us. If you've been baptized in Jesus' name, right? Filled with the Spirit, evidence speaking in other tongues, and you have been you, you you've repented for your sins right you've repented for your sins you're 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 you're, you're done with it you have the same power living inside of you so what i want to do is i want to pray because there's a spirit of depression that needs to go and it's so so heavy on my heart that right now i'm just rambling and i need to pray so guys if you're not dealing with depression or anxiety or stress or struggle right now what I want you to do with me is I want you to pray for those on here that are. Because I guarantee you there are several on here. God doesn't just put words on my heart and put things on my heart to just where nobody's dealing with it. So this is where our Bible study group comes together. And we pray as a collective. So let's go ahead and let's pray. We're going to pray against fear. We're going to rebuke and we're going to bind fear. Okay, we're going to rebuke and we're going to bind fear. We're going to rebuke and bind anxiety, rebuke and bind, imp uh, bind depression. Then we're going to loose God's spirit of healing to touch them mentally, physically. Okay, mentally and physically. So let's just go pray. Let's pray as a collective. That's what needs to happen right now. I, can, I just feel it. And I'm sure some of you guys are feeling it too. If you're feeling it, throw it up there. Lord, I rebuke and I bind every bit of anxiety in Jesus name. Every worry about kids, I rebuke and bind in Jesus name. Every worry about finances, I rebuke, I rebuke and bind in Jesus name. Every 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 cause of depression, God, 
I rebuke and bind in Jesus' name. And I lose your spirit of joy. I lose your spirit of healing. Okay, I'm going to stop right here because the Lord just opened it up something to me. If you're sitting over there, if you're sitting over there right now, and this is you, you need to get up. And you need to start shouting. And you need to start praising. And you need to start lifting your hands. And you need to start worshiping God. Because the only way circumstances... The only way circumstances are going to change in your life is if you, you start doing something new. You have to get out of your comfort zone. If it means you going in the bathroom and starting your walk with God and your prayer and worship alone, then do it. Start it. Move to the bathroom. Start praying. If it means shutting your bedroom door and saying, kids, don't bother me for five minutes, then do it. Start worshiping. Start praying. Start breaking through because God wants to break through in your life right now. God wants to make a move and break through in your life right now. He wants to do it for you. But it's not going to happen if we just sit there and just... Okay, God, I receive it. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I rebuke and bind depression. I rebuke and bind anxiety. I rebuke and bind fear. Lord, I lose your spirit of healing. I lose your spirit of deliverance, God, in Jesus' name. I pray that there be a new faith that, that, that rises up in each and every one of us, God, to pray for one another, not just to be selfish and continue just to go down our own little path because I'm just trying to do good in my walk with God. No, but to give us opportunities to walk and, and reach out every single day. And I thank you, God, for your mercy. And I thank you, God, for your love. And I thank you, God, for your grace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Jesus. Man. Guys, God is so good. God is so good. He is so good, man. And he loves each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. Don't take the lies that the enemy is whispering into your ear and let it ruin the rest of your day. It's not worth it. We should have peace, love, joy, sound mind, faithfulness, not fearful. I love you guys. I know that tonight was a lot different than normal Bible study. I mean a lot different. But this is what God put on my heart tonight to do and to talk about. So, and for you guys that have never been here, we do this every single Monday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So, next thing is, is if you guys, whether you know anybody or not, that are dealing with depression or anxiety or fear or worried about a job situation or whatever, I would challenge you guys to share this. And the reason why is because whether you know anybody or not, I can't tell you how many times I've received the answer that I've been praying for through somebody else's video that they randomly posted. So you never know if this is the answer to somebody else's prayer. I love you guys. I'll see you next Monday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Y'all be good.